The Cardinals and the Brewers are set to lock up for the first time in 2023. And today we break down this series in a crossover episode with Chuck Freeman from Locked on Brewers on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans and Brewers fans. I'm J.D. Haffron, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Brewers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, also, find us on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment. That way you can interact with us. Be sure to hit that notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans of baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. And, of course, we also want to welcome in all of the Brewers fans who are, are watching today's episode as well because the Cardinals and the Brewers are set to meet for the first time this season. And... Coming into this series, uh, we, we've got a lot to talk about with what's going on on the St. Louis side, what's going on on the Milwaukee side, but to help us with everything happening with the Milwaukee Brewers side of things, let's welcome in Chuck Freeman, who is part of Locked on Brewers, the host of Locked on Brewers. And first, Chuck, I want to say welcome to the Locked on Network because you just took over the Locked on Brewers show. It is. And JD, just because we're rivals doesn't mean you and I can't be friends. Is that a case? Is that okay? <laughs> that, that's absolutely fine. Uh, hey, you got, there's nothing, you've never done anything to me, nor have I done anything to you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this series because it's always fun to, uh, you know, get a get a division matchup. And this will be the first one for the Cardinals. You guys have actually already played the Cubs this year, but uh, the Cardinals have been uh, facing a couple of teams outside of their division. Uh, the start of this season has been very, very different for both of these teams. The Brewers began on the road, took two of three from the Cubs at Wrigley. Then they go into New York and faced the very expensive New York Mets, ended up sweeping them in spectacular fashion while the Cardinals began at home taking two of three from the Toronto Blue Jays, and everybody's feeling great about that. And then they get swept by the very impressive Atlanta Braves. So the Brewers currently sitting at the top of the NL Central at 5-1, and one, while the Cardinals limp in at 2-4. and four. They're in last place. So, Chuck, what has been going on with the Brewers that helped them get out to this fast start? Well, I feel like we've been in this position before, J.D., where the Brewers are enjoying themselves early in the season and in first place. And then when October rolls around, well, there's the Cardinals. You know, they're in the playoffs. Well, there they are in the World Series. And here we are sitting home once again. So, yeah, April baseball. We're great at April baseball in Milwaukee. Fast starts are our thing here. And, yeah, 5-1, and one, lost an opening day, and it came back and won the last five games and the pitching has been great, but offensively, uh, I don't think anybody expected this uh, because the Brewers, quite frankly, in the last several years um, have had good pitching. It's uh, the offense that has struggled, even though they're in a hitting hitter-friendly ballpark. But it's been the young guys on this team, Bryce Terang, uh, Joey Weimer, uh, who's been really, really good. You know, these young guys who nobody really knew nothing about. But so after one week of the baseball, uh, these guys have become household names here in the Brew City. Well, uh, one of the things that I, I did notice, keeping an eye on you guys, as uh, people like to say, you got to you know keep your friends close, your enemies closer. <laughs> because you got to keep an eye on what's going on in Milwaukee because most people chose either St. Louis or Milwaukee to win this division this year. Uh, your ace, Corbin Burns, uh, has actually struggled in the first two starts. What's been going on with uh, the former NL Cy Young Award winner? Yeah, first game gave up uh, four runs in the third inning against the Cubs last Thursday. And I cut him some slack there, and I think a lot of us did. It just, you know, the Brewers didn't score any runs to support him. Had they scored some runs, things might have been a little different. But uh, on Wednesday, he was terrible. He had two two-run homers, uh, was out of there by the fifth inning, gave up six runs. Fortunately, the Basques really rescued him and got him off on a no decision. But he says he feels he's pitching fine. But he says, when I get guys in scoring position, position, Seems like I'm making a mistake or two, and then that's been the problem. 
But otherwise, he feels he's throwing the ball fine. No soreness, injury, or anything like that. It's just that he feels, again, guys are getting on the base, and he's not coming through with the right pitches. Now, in the offseason, uh, there was the arbitration case, and you know it became national news where – Corbin wasn't exactly thrilled with the way the the situation went down. Most players aren't. They don't like the arbitration and how no. they're perceived in those in those cases because they basically your team tells you how, what's wrong with you and how you don't deserve this because you stink at this particular part of your game. Uh, do you think that has any carryover into the the early season struggles for Corbin, or is it just you know early season stuff? No, I, I think it's just early season stuff. It's a bad luck in there, and I think. At the end of the day, he's going to be just fine. Let's face it, J.D., he's pitching for his next contract, and it's not going yeah. to be with the Milwaukee Brewers. He's going to get a lot of money out there, and maybe there's a little pressure on him to pitch well. Maybe that's a little bit of a case. But, um, yeah, he's angered because the Brewers wouldn't give him the $700,000. And quite frankly, if you're the Brewers, why would you give him $700,000 when you know that he's not going to be on the team in the future? You're just giving money away. There's no need to give away $700,000 that way, especially for a franchise that – as we always hear, is financially strapped like the, the Brewers. But yeah, I think he's just going to be fine. The motivation for him is he's trying to get this team into the playoffs, but then also you got that big contract that's looming if he comes yeah. through with a Cy Young-type year, J.D. Yeah, well, uh, as a Cardinals fan, uh, we're glad we don't have to see him because he normally carves us up like a Thanksgiving turkey. So kind of kind of nice that we don't have to face birds this weekend. I feel the same uh, way with Wayno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wayno's out too, so we don't have to worry about that either for you guys. Um, Cardinals starting pitching has been the real issue for us uh, going two and four here in the beginning. Uh, no secret coming into this season that starting pitching was going to be this team's Achilles heel and so far it really has been a struggle early on in games uh, in particular the first two innings I'm gonna throw a stat at you here Chuck and I, I can't wait to see your reaction uh, in the first two innings opponents are hitting 456 off of Cardinals starting pitching yeah I was surprised to see that and and <laughs> I, 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 and I also see that they haven't thrown too many clean innings yet this year as well uh, yeah. their starters um, yeah the, and Flaherty is pitching on Friday night I know we're gonna get to him in a little bit but yeah, I'm just surprised that the start, and I know they got some drama there, but they should be more concerned with their starting pitching. That's been such a problem so far with them. And uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's that's a little surprising. The, some of the batting averages there, the hard contact that has been there, and uh, yeah, I was just taking a look at some of the the stats today uh, on that. Uh, only nine strikeouts in 71 hitters that uh, your your pitchers your starters have faced. Uh, 12.7 percent strikeout rate. Uh, that yeah. is that is not good right there. Again, <laughs> JD, I, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt because, as we know, it's a long season with, uh, especially with the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. It, it hasn't stopped people from already hitting the panic button after six games. But, you know, we'll try to pump the brakes a little bit on oh. that. But it, it's tough in these games when uh, it feels like you're always playing from behind before you even get a chance to to swing the bat. So not a, not a great way to start the game. But uh, as you mentioned, we're going to run down these pitching matchups for the series. We'll do that next on this crossover episode of Locked on Brewers and Locked on Cardinals. Now, one thing I want to bring up for your championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop on eBay Motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you're going to be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, get the right fit, and get them all at the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. The Built March Madness bracket is complete, and your champion is Brownie Batter Puff. Brownie Batter Puff knocks off Salted Caramel in the finals. Chuck, uh, I don't know how you feel about Brownie Batter or Salted Caramel, but those were clearly the favorites going in uh, into this bracket, and uh, they ended up matching up in the finals. It, it wasn't exactly an easy road to get there. It defeated Coconut Brownie Bar in the opening round, and then it knocks off Double Chocolate Bar. Then the final four, it bested the Cookies and Cream Bar, to win into the finals. So uh, it, it was a heck of a tournament. You can still go look at the brackets by going to builtmarchmadness.com. 
My particular pick was the peanut butter brownie bar, which lost in round two. Uh, I'll consider that an upset against Cookie Dough Chunk Puff. Valiant effort by my boys at Peanut Butter Brownie Bar, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. But you can get all these great flavors available by going to Built.com. Built is the best protein bar ever because not only do they taste great, but they're good for you. They're all high in protein, but they're low in sugar, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. And my goodness, all the flavors that I mentioned here, plus many, many more, including the limited Snickerdoodle Puffs, they're available now. Those are going to sell out quick, so make sure you head on over to Built.com today. Order your box now. Once again, we're doing a crossover episode. I'm JD from Locked on Cardinals. We've got Chuck from Locked on Brewers, our two teams playing each other this weekend. Um, In the first game, we're going to go to pitching matchups now, Chuck. In the first game, the Cardinals have Jack Flaherty starting, who had a bizarre start (laughs) his first time out this year where uh, he threw five no-hit innings against the Toronto Blue Jays. It was a great hitting team, but he walks seven batters. He hits a guy. But somehow, some way, nobody scores, and nobody got a hit in the first five innings. It was really, really strange. And for the Brewers, we'll have right-hander Brandon Woodruff on the mound. So what is it about Woodruff that has made him so tough over the years where it's kind of like with him and Corbin, you've got ace one and ace one A. Yeah, that's the strength of this Brewer team, J.D., you know, the two guys at the top of the rotation, and, of course, Freddie Peralta, who you guys will see on Sunday. But Woodruff has been real good. He was last Saturday in, a, in very cold conditions. And you know how Wrigley can get in March. Yeah. Um, they uh, and That's another story, playing an opening series in March. That was real smart. Um, Woodruff had eight strikeouts, and he was a bulldog out there, got a no decision for his efforts, but was really, really good and pounding the corners, and his heater was good, and just a strong performance out of Woodruff, kind of like what we've seen uh, and years gone by from Woody. Uh, the Brewers have those two potential free agents coming up in the future, Burns and Woodruff. I think Burns is going to be gone, but I think Woodruff is going to be a part of this rotation in years to come. I think he's the guy that they're going to invest some money into. Would you prefer they keep Woodruff? Is there something about Burns? Do you think he's just going to make too much money and just be too expensive for Milwaukee? I think both guys are equally going to be expensive. Burns is probably going to make a little bit more, but I, uh, I to me, as you mentioned there, JD, one A and one B, I, I feel comfortable. I feel just as comfortable when either one is on the mound. That's been the big day debate here in Milwaukee. Who would you rather have? Woodruff or Burns? I'm telling you, I feel it's split because you have people who love Burns, you have people who love Woodruff, and they've all been great in their own way over the last several years. Yeah, the one thing that's really different between the two is one's got the side young and the other one doesn't, but both have had fantastic yeah. numbers uh, over the last few years. Uh, moving on to Saturday night's game, we got a pair of southpaws that will be towing the rubber. Uh, the Cardinals will be starting the big left-hander, Jordan Montgomery, who he was decent against Toronto. Uh, nothing spectacular, but nothing so bad where it was like embarrassing. Uh, he was good enough to get the win in that game. And for Milwaukee, we've got Eric Lauer. Uh, what are your thoughts on Lauer uh, going up against this Cardinals offense? Another guy who pitched very well last Sunday against the Cubs ran into some trouble early on, walked a few guys, gave him a couple of base hits, but really settled down in the middle innings. And the Brewers really came out and gave him some offensive support. And that was the key. So, Uh, Other than Burns, you know, the joke in town here is that Burns is the weak link on this team. (laughs) He's not, but through the first week, he pretty much has been in the starting rotation. But Lauer has been pretty good. And, uh, but I I, got to tell you, JD, when when Lauer pitches, I always say, I always feel like I have to like peek over the coffee table or the bar to watch him pitch because you just, you know, you're really nervous when he's on the mound because you don't know what Eric Lauer you're going to get. Saturday night, it might be six shutout innings or it might be out of there by the third inning. Cardinal offense gets to him. Yeah, and the Cardinals feasted on left-handers last season. It was the righties that really gave Mm -hmm. them some trouble, which is one of the reasons why they kind of got a more balanced uh, lineup this year with left-handers in their lineup to face those righties. But uh, on the the other side of things, man, they they enjoy seeing those left-handers on the mound to start this game. So uh, we'll we'll see how things pan out on Saturday. Then on Sunday afternoon, uh, it's back to the right-handers. We've got Jake Woodford on the mound for the Cardinals. Jake Woodford came into the season, uh, was going to be kind of like a sixth man, 
uh, the, the guy that would do the long relief, but with Adam Wainwright going down with the growing injury while playing, or well, not even playing, he heard it while he was working out <laughs> with Team USA at the World Baseball Classic. Uh, Jake Woodford slid in after having an outstanding spring, and then he looked terrible in his first outing. He was all over the place. I don't know if it was just first game jitters, but he was up in the zone a lot, and he's uh, he's a guy that needs to keep the ball down because he's not a guy that's going to get a lot of strikeouts because he's not an overpowering pitcher. He's a guy that, is, you know, he did have his strikeouts in the spring, but he's more of one of those guys like most Cardinal pitchers where they pitch to contact because of the great defense that is behind them. Uh, sinker ball guy likes to keep it on the ground so that it rolls over to Arenado and Edmund and Donovan and Goldschmidt, all these gold glovers that they have on the infield. Uh, for the Brewers on Sunday, it's going to be Freddie Peralta. Now, Peralta dealt with injuries last year. So we didn't really see the the normal Freddie Peralta last year. He had a couple of games where he looked good, but a lot of injuries last year. But I tell you what, this first game this season, he looked pretty darn good holding the Mets scoreless over six innings. Yeah, gave up just two hits on opening day last Monday. And uh, yeah, Freddie went through some issues last year. He says he's in a better mental state this year. You know, went through all those positions and, you know, he's, uh, you know, teammates like him. One of the part of the heart and soul of this team here, uh, and the fans like him. He just has got to go out and pitch like we know he is. His nickname is Fastball Freddy because, for the most part, that's what he's gotten by by uh, with the, with the fastball. But he's worked in a couple of different pitches along the way, and um, you know, once you get by Corbin Burns and you get by Woodruff, you have Fastball Freddy sitting in that three hole usually. He's in the four hole now. They decided to put Lauer in the three hole, but technically the number three starter, the third best pitcher on this team, JD, is Freddie Peralta. So we'll see what he does. Um, yeah, he just pitched so good against the Mets. The Mets came in here, I thought, though, in that three game series. I thought they were dragging, you know, because they went from spring training to opening up in Florida, which they trained in Jupiter, but they went to Miami, played those games there, opened up, and then they had to play their second opening day. Uh, as a visiting team on Monday. And I think by the end of it, they were just dragging. They were. They were short of pitching. They used the position player to pitch on Tuesday. So I think the Brewers kind of caught them a little uh, a little shorthanded and the pitching staff and, you know, a little tired. Uh, so I think that's why the Mets were glad to have it off day on Thursday. Yeah, the uh, I mean, none of us are going to shed any tears for the Mets with that oh. payroll that they've got. <laughs> that they're dealing with injuries. You don't like to see anybody deal with injuries, but yeah, no. definitely missing Verlander, no. missing Jose Quintana. Uh, those are some big names missing from their starting rotation. And uh, hopefully the Cardinals will get a chance to, to, to face them without those guys, because uh, you know, those are, those are very, very good pitchers, just like the guys that the, the Brewers will be throwing. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on what's going on in the Brewers bullpen right now? We know that Devin Williams, who's a St. Louis guy, so very familiar with Devin. Uh, but after the trade of Hayter last year, things kind of went sour for the team. How, how's the bullpen been so far in 2023? A bullpen has been really good because they've given the ball to the bullpen after six innings so far, like most teams do. And Strzelecki has been good. Devin Williams has had a couple of scoreless innings out of the bullpen so far. He has been great. So, yeah, I mean, the bullpen has – you look at these guys, and when they traded Josh Hader, that was a big loss for this team because everybody moved up a notch. But, yeah, I, I think the bullpen has been – is probably the biggest question mark on this team other than if they'd find enough offense, which right now it seems like they have, but, again, through one week of the season – but the bullpen, other than Devin Williams, there's nobody out there I'd say I'd feel real comfortable with. Uh, certainly not Matt Bush, who pitched a scoreless inning yesterday. So I think that bullpen, I, I'm waiting, unfortunately, waiting for them to be had in their middle part of that bullpen. Not Devin, but other guys in that bullpen. I don't feel too comfortable about uh, Cardinals bullpen actually has been pretty darn good so far this year outside of Jordan Hicks. He's been roughed up a little bit, but uh, Helsley, Zach Thompson from the left side has been outstanding. Hasn't given up a run, not only in the regular season, but was went scoreless throughout the whole spring. So uh, he's been fantastic. So not, not anything to complain about other than Jordan Hicks for the uh, Cardinals bullpen. So, the offense is is what we need to get into next because both of these offenses have been pretty darn good to start the season. We're going to talk about that, and we'll choose our key players to watch for this series next on this crossover episode of Locked on Brewers and Locked on Cardinals. Our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards 
featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Now, unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience by collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next-level competitions and rewards. Now, during opening day, you might have seen the MLB uh, All-Stars Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez in the commercials about so rare and two of the best young players in the game. They believe in this product. They believe in these cards and how much fun they are and will actually be engaging with the so rare community throughout the season at MLB events. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, if you end up being successful, you get to the top of their leaderboards. You can win a variety of rewards, which include so rare scarcity cards. Uh, you've got game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, VIP experiences like meeting Major League Baseball stars. So be a part of it. Head to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E dot com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and then start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash locked on to start playing today. Now, as I mentioned, both of these teams come into the series as two of the top hitting teams in all of Major League Baseball. The Cardinals lead the majors with a, an absurd team batting average of 324. They're two and four, but they've got a 324 batting average, if that tells you how bad the starting pitching has been. And then the Brewers aren't that far behind. They're in fifth place, hitting 281. Uh, Chuck Freeman from Locked On Brewers here. Who's been doing the most damage for this Brewers lineup thus far in 2023? Well, you wouldn't guess it, but it's Brian Anderson, a, a guy who's, uh, you know, the Brewers picked up in the offseason, kind of a reclamation project. He's had some nice years with Marlins, but the last couple have not been good. But he's batting over 500 so far. Uh, Garrett Mitchell, the center fielder, has have has three home runs in the last two games. Um, so those are guys right there. Joey Weimer out right field, decent start for him. Bryce Terang took an 0 for the other day. Uh, and then um, he's like 0 for his last six, but he has been red hot, hit a grand slam at opening day. He's the second baseman, um, and he's a guy who's really good defensively. It's just a matter of if he can hit. But, yeah, there's some guys like Rowdy Telez who's who are off to a little bit of a slower start, just hit his first home run on Wednesday against the Mets. But, you know, we're hoping some of these guys get going a little bit, but it's really been the young guys, and especially like Garrett Mitchell, the center fielder, has just been fantastic so far. And the pickup of – oh, Jesse Winker. Let's not forget Jesse Winker. Here's another guy who, you know, J.D., when he was at Cincinnati, he always destroyed the Milwaukee Brewers. He went out to Seattle last year, had a bad year. But he's come here so far, and in most of the games, he's had RBI base hits and come through with some clutch base hits and getting on base and all that. So Jesse Winker has been one of the veteran presence on a young team that's uh, helping to carry the offense so far. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Garrett Mitchell, one of the, the top prospects that came up for the Brewers this year. He's got all the tools, man. Uh, if he's hitting the long ball, you put that together with uh, the speed that he's got, which is elite speed. He's got good defense, great arm. He's uh, he's an impressive player. He's somebody definitely uh, to keep an eye on And uh, if, you're, if you're a Cardinals fan. Uh, on the Cardinals side of things, it's really been everyone. <laughs> it's up and down the order. They've got on paper and so far – on the field, they've had one of the best uh, lineups in all of baseball. Like they're legit, even without Lars Newbar, who uh, you know obviously made his name in the World Baseball Classic, playing for Team, team Japan. Uh, he gets hurt on opening day, ends up hurting his thumb, sliding into third base, so he's on the IL. But they've had plenty of guys step up in his absence. They've gotten contributions from the whole team. Uh, the Cardinals have their own rookie that's uh, doing some big things. Right fielder Jordan Walker. And when I say big things. 6'6", 250, Chuck. He's a large man oh, yeah. out there in right field, and he's got a hit in all six games so far this year. Just hit his first Major League home run on Wednesday, which was a, a huge moment for him. But there's not a guy in this lineup that hasn't done something positive offensively for this team, and with the way their starting pitching has been, they're going to need that to continue, that trend, if uh, they, they hope to win some games this weekend because uh, in the two games where they didn't hit quite as well as they did in previous games, they lost 4-1 to and 5-2 to two to Atlanta, and they weren't really that close of games at all. So for this series, Chuck, who is your pick to click? Who on the Brewers should the Cardinals fear the most offensively this weekend? Well, for the Cardinals, first of all, um, you know, Goldschmidt and Arenado. I, I I have nightmares about those guys all the time. Yeah. So I'm always afraid when a, when guys like that 
come into hitter friendly and fan field. And I know this is your next couple of uh, games here, next several games. You got Milwaukee and you got Colorado, I believe. So hitter friendly ballparks. So the offense should be continuing for the, uh, the Cardinals. So I'd say one of those two guys, I would never count out. And, um, and I know Arenado loves playing at Amfan Field. He just says he sees – I remember last year saying he just sees the ball well. You remember when I was talking about all the players who are doing well for the Brewers just a little while ago here? The yeah. one person I didn't mention is the guy who should be – a guy I should be mentioning is Christian Yelich, who is struggling again. Looks like there's sometimes – J.D., he looks great at the plate, and he looks like the form he was in 2018 and 2019. But the other day, Wednesday, he looked like – couldn't get out of his own way. So yeah. that is important that he gets turned around. But I think the pick the click on this team, um, I'm going to keep it going with uh, Joey Weimer out in right field, hit his first home run, three run blast on Wednesday. I think that's the guy who could have a big series. But, you know, I mostly I fear what you guys are going to do against us because <laughs> with those two big bats in the middle of the order, God, I just hate, I feel like, I'll be honest, I feel like those two guys are like, in the batting order twice, because I feel like every inning, oh, here comes Gar Arenado and Goldschmidt. Did they just bat last inning? Yes. No. And they batted the previous inning and the previous <laughs> inning before that. So, yeah. So those guys, J.D., fear me the most. Um, so uh, hopefully this pitching can continue to hold down those two at hitter-friendly and fan field. Yeah. Um, for, on my side of things, it is easy to pick uh, one of those two. I, I'm definitely going to go with Goldschmidt. Uh, so far, hitting 450 this season, but his career hitting in Milwaukee, he's a 324 hitter with 18 home runs and 46 RBIs in just 57 games. So he's pretty darn good when playing uh, in Milwaukee. He he loves to hit there as well, and uh, he's a guy that I, I would I suspect would continue. Uh, is strong hitting so far this season. But if I had to choose someone else, I would say, um, well, give me give me Wilson Contreras as my uh, pick to click. Uh, okay. Going to be facing his brother this weekend, which is always nice. You know, he'll get to see his brother. And um, he had his first homestand with the Cardinals. It was interrupted. He had a knee contusion, took a, a Jordan Hicks sinker off his kneecap uh, behind the plate that uh, knocked him out of that game and then knocked him out of the next game. And then he came back. He's still hitting 333, but uh, a few more days off. I, I feel like he's going to be 100% healthy. And uh, I don't know, when family's around, I, I could see the the two Contreras brothers competing against each other at a high level this weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't care how bad the Cardinals are struggling. You could have told me at this point that they were 0-6. I'd still be worried about the series of on the Brewers. Eh? I'm telling you. <laughs> You guys, I, you know, and I hear that, you know, the drama that's going on. Oh, the pitching staff hasn't uh, done this and that. I just feel like anytime the Brewers play the Cardinals, all those ills get somehow fixed very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the drama you mentioned with Tyler O'Neill and manager Ali Marmel, winning cures everything. So sure if does. the Cardinals can get back into the win kind of column, maybe take two or three this weekend, I think everything will get pushed aside and everybody will be friends again. But if the losing continues, um, We'll see. We'll see. I don't, I don't know how well they're all going to react to that, but it should be an entertaining weekend of baseball in Milwaukee. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, first game uh, coming up on Friday night and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy baseball knowledge possible. You can find Locked on Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you haven't already, please give both Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Brewers a follow on Twitter. Obviously, you can follow me at JD Sports Radio. You got Chuck right there at Chuck Freeman. You can find him on Twitter there as well. So give him a follow. Like and subscribe our channels on YouTube. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. And we'll see you next time on Locked On Brewers and Locked On Cardinals.